नमस्कार अभिनंदन है आपका राज्यसभा टीवी में पायलट अभिनंदन वर्धमान इज टू बी हैंडेड ओवर टू इंडिया एट वागा टुडे दैट्स द बिगेस्ट फोकस दिस आफ्टरनून ऑन राज्यसभा टीवी आई एम ऐश्वर्या कपूर विद यू हेयर द मिड डे न्यूज हेडलाइंस India will be the guest of honor for the first time at the organization of Islamic Cooperation Meeting Sushma Swaraj to address a plenary session reports claim Pakistan may avoid summit Celebrations begin at the Atari Joint Check Post scores of people with Indian flags arrive to receive Indian Air Force pilot Abhinandan Vardhaman Pakistan likely to release him today Government bans a separatist group a Jamaat-e-Islami in Jammu and Kashmir for anti-national and subversive activities declares it an unlawful association. Cabinet extends 10% reservation for EWS category in educational institutions and public jobs in Jammu and Kashmir announces extension of reservation benefits to people living along international border. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi to dedicate developmental projects of worth 2,995 crore rupees in Tamil Nadu to lay foundation stone for five national highways. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj is in Abu Dhabi. She is attending the Foreign Minister's meet of the OIC or the Organization of Islamic States. So let's cut across live. And traditions. home to many religions and now one of the major economies of the world i carry the greetings of my prime minister shri narendra modi ji and 1.3 billion indians including more than 185 million muslim brothers and sisters our muslim brothers and sisters are a microcosm of the diversity of india they speak tamil and telugu malayalam and marathi Bangla and Bhojpuri and any of the numerous languages of India they have diverse culinary tastes myriad choices of traditional attire and they maintain strong cultural and linguistic heritage of the regions they love and they have lived for generations they practice their respective beliefs and live in harmony with each other and with their non-muslim brethren it is this appreciation of diversity and coexistence that has ensured that very few muslims in india have fallen prey to the poisonous propaganda of radical and extremist ide- ideologies your highness and excellencies 2019 is indeed a very special year in this year the oic is celebrating its golden jubilee the united arab emirates is celebrating year of tolerance and india is celebrating the 150th birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi a global symbol of truth and non violence it is therefore a matter of pride for me and for india to be invited in this special year to be your guest of honor and to be extended a hand of friendship i convey my deep appreciation to foreign minister his highness sheikh abdullah bin zaid for his sagacious leadership and for his invitation thank you your highness your highness and excellencies in the past 4 years few relations have seen as much engagement as india's relationship with uae and indeed with the entire gulf and west asia region it is a return of history uae has shown how a nation can power its progress with a grand vision with the openness of the world with an embrace of technology with investment in human resources and with an environment that nurtures talent and cultures from around the world we also express our special gratitude to saudi arabia bangladesh and other friends for their strong support for hearing india's voice in this forum the highness and excellencies the oic member constitute more than 1/4 of the members of the united nations and nearly a quarter of the humanity it is an organization 
that has a key role in shaping our world. It brings together nations on the foundation of a common faith, but also by a shared desire for a better future for their people. From Southeast Asia to the shores of Latin America, from the steppes of Central Asia to the vast expanse of the African continent, from South Asia to the great arc of West Asia and North Africa, the nations represented here also reflect a magnificent diversity of language and literature, customs and culture, history and heritage. Your Highness, Excellencies, India shares much with you. Many of us have experienced the dark days of colonialism. Many of us saw the light of freedom and the bright ray of hope at the same time. We have stood together in solidarity in our quest for justice, dignity and equality of all people, regardless of race and religion. We have worked together to fashion global institutions into representative platforms, defined not by the interest of a few, but the voice of all sections of humanity. We have together struggled for a world where access to resources, markets and opportunities is fair and balanced. And with so many nations here, India has forged deep bonds of friendship and close partnership. Friends, as India's economy has grown and become more integrated with the world, these partnerships have become stronger. We have excellent political ties marked by warmth, respect and goodwill. With many, we have expanding defense and security cooperation. Our economic engagement is robust and growing rapidly. Our digital partnerships are shaping the course of our future, and our ties have the warm glow of deepening human and cultural links. Nations to our east, Brunei, Indonesia, and Malaysia, are important pillars of India's activist policy and of our broader engagement in the Indo-Pacific region. In our neighborhood, with Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Maldives, we have ties forged in our shared struggles and sacrifices, in the immeasurable warmth of our hearts, and in our un unwavering commitment to the security and prosperity of our people and region. In Central Asia, where human aspirations linked us across the mightiest mountains since ancient times, we are rebuilding our relationship along new routes of possibilities. We do this especially with and through Iran, a country with which we not only share civilizational and cultural links, but a partnership that is vital for stability and prosperity in our region. In West Asia, our solidarity with the aspirations of the Palestinian people have remained unwavering. Our international journey was often pursued in close partnership with Egypt. Iraq and India have stood together in our triumphs and trials. We have, with great admiration, supported Jordan's efforts in strengthening the voices of moderation and building bridges of understanding between faiths. Further to the west, with nations like Tunisia, Morocco and Algeria, we work for a shared desire for a more inclusive world. With Turkey, a nation with which we have many strands of connected history, we are imparting new momentum to our ties. Our many friends from Africa are here. It is a friendship of deep emotional bond that comes for, from shared struggle for freedom and for a voice and a place in the world. Today, on the foundations of that extraordinary heritage, India and Africa have launched a new partnership of prosperity in the dynamic African continent. And here in our neighborhood of the Gulf region, our relationships are as old as time. The idea the tides of Arab Arabian seas have carried forth our timeless links of trade, culture, and religions. Presently, the Gulf region is our largest market, supplier of energy, and source of remittances. More than 8 million Indians living in the region are the 8 million vibrant threads of this partnership. But now our relationship is much more than that. Thanks to the extraordinary effort and attention by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the leadership of the region. It is an indispensable strategic and security partnership and a natural economic partnership of immense value to our nations and for our shared region. 
Your Highness and Excellencies. Today, we all live in a world of sweeping changes and multiple challenges that happen, but rarely in history. We see global shifts in power. The center of gravity of the global economy is moving to Asia. The international order we are familiar with is changing. Freedom, opportunities, connectivity, health, education, and prosperity are more widespread than ever before. The time it takes nations to lift people out of poverty is getting shorter. Digital revolution has created unprecedented opportunities to empower people and transform our economies. We have affordable and accessible technologies that give us hope for a sustainable energy future. Yet, we also live on the edge of uncertainties, tensions, turbulence, disputes, violence, dislocation, displacement are also at a high. Conflicts within and between societies are rising. We are also seeing the human and economic costs of climate change. And we are witnessing the terrible daily destruction in senseless terrorist violence. It is destroying lives, destabilizing regions, and putting the world at great peril. The reach of terror is growing. Its lethality is increasing, and the toll it is taking is rising. In the rich diversity of Southeast Asia, in West Asia and the Gulf, in North Africa and Sahel region, in Europe and North America, in Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and India, we see the terrible face of terror. Excellencies and Your Highness, terrorism and extremism bear different names and labels. It uses diverse causes, but in each case, it is driven by distortion of religion and a misguided belief in its power to succeed. The fight against terrorism is not a confrontation against any religion. It cannot be. Just as Islam literally means peace, none of the 99 names of Allah mean violence. Similarly, every region in the world stands for peace, compassion, and brotherhood. There is a verse in the Holy Quran which says, La ikra fi ad -deen. Let there be no compulsion in religion. There is another surah, Al-Hajurat, which says, O mankind, we created you from a single pair of male and female and made you into nations and tribes so that you may know one another, not that you may despise one another. Similarly, the same message was given by the founder, Guru of Sikhism, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, when he says, and I quote, Avval Allah noor upaya, kudrat ke sab bande, ek noor te sab jagupjya, kwan paleko mande. This means, first Allah created light, then by his creative power, he made all mortal beings. From that one light, the entire world came into being. So who is good and who is bad? Your Highness and Excellencies, India has always embraced and found it easy to embrace pluralism since it is embedded in the oldest Sanskrit religious text, the Rig Veda, and I quote, Ekam Sadvipra Bahuda Vadanti, which means, God is one, but learned men describe him in many ways. Our great philosopher Swami Vivekananda said that this phrase from the Rig Veda has given the theme to all subsequent thoughts to India, and one that will be the theme of the whole world of religions. Your Highness and Excellencies, this is not a clash of civilizations or cultures, but a contest of ideas and ideals. As Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has often said, it is a struggle between the values of humanism and the forces of inhumanity. Your Highness and Excellencies, if we want to save the humanity, then we must tell the states who provide shelter and funding to the terrorists to dismantle the infrastructure of the terrorist camps and stop providing funding and shelter to the terror organizations based in that country. At the same time, I would like to say that this menace cannot be fought only through military, intelligence, or diplomatic means. It is also a battle that must be won through the strengths of our values and the real message of religions. This is a task that states, societies, sages, scholars, 
spiritual leaders and families must pursue through personal contacts and on social media and for this faiths must speak to faiths cultures must engage with cultures communities must build bridges not erect walls the youth must shape the future not destroy lives your highness and excellencies i'm particularly pleased to participate in a conference whose theme is a road map for prosperity and development however i may enter a caveat the young are not going to be content with only road maps they want roads as well they also want them to be built fast it must be our common objective to ensure that we leave them a world that is infinitely better in terms of equitable economic growth and social justice than the one we inherited that is the mission which has brought us together in abu dhabi a city that has matured into a landmark of asia and the world your highness and excellencies india is the world's third largest economy on purchasing power parity and is the fastest growing one we are prepared to share our market resources opportunities and skills with our partners we will do what we can within our capacity to ensure that the path to development remains open to all and the global trade regime is open stable and fair your highness and excellencies at 50 organization of islamic states is making a new beginning the choices you make the directions you set will have a profound impact on humanity the oic has a huge responsibility and a great opportunity to lift humanity to a higher level of peace and prosperity and to make this planet a better place not just for your people but for rest of the world and we will work with you to spread the true meaning and mission of all religions promote respect for and between faiths counter the language of hate with a message of harmony advocate moderation over extremism and pluralism over exclusion inspire youth to the path of service then of destruction build bridge of understanding and reduce barriers across cultures and religions to highness and excellencies the late president of india dr apj abdul kalam popularly referred to as the people's president said and i quote where there is righteousness in the heart there is beauty in the character when there is beauty in the character there is harmony in the home when there is harmony in the home there is order in the nation when there is order in the nation there is peace in the world to highness and excellencies i come from the land of mahatma gandhi where every prayer ends with the call for shanti that is peace for all i convey our best wishes our support and our solidarity in your quest for stability peace harmony economic growth and prosperity for your people and the world thank you shukran اشكر ضيفه الشرف معالي سوش مسواراج وزير خارجيه جمهوريه الهند على هذه All right so that was Sushma Swaraj addressing the inaugural uh, plenary of uh, OIC meeting where India has been invited as a guest of honor and uh, thanking Saudi Arabia Bangladesh and other OIC members uh, for their support in hearing India's voice uh, at the forum Sushma Swaraj said that India shares much with OIC she also raised the issue of uh, terrorism saying that the reach of terror is increasing uh, we are seeing the terrible face of terror and she said that uh, the menace cannot only be fought by military means but through right communication saying that terrorism and extremism bear different names and labels but in each case it is driven by distortion of religion and a misguided belief in its power to succeed she also spoke of the need for development uh, to uh, counter terrorism let's uh, now go across to akilesh All right, let's go across to Akilesh, our colleague, for more on that story. Akilesh, a very important points there there made by Sushma Swaraj at the OIC meeting. Uh, there, she also spoke about terror and how the menace of terrorism can be tackled unitedly by many nations. And interestingly, we also saw that chair where a Pakistan minister was supposed to sit that was, of course, lying vacant. 
You know, uh, it is really a new beginning of OIC, and Sushma Swaraj mentioned it that OIC has be begun afresh. And that is why she mentioned what is India. She told that India inhabits 185 million Muslims, and she also told that uh, India is the third largest economy in the world. Uh, given the fact that India and, uh, you know, uh, all Arabian countries, all Muslim countries are having fantastic lesson in this point of time, she uh, uh, mentioned the menace of terrorism and she told to the OIC members that how this menace of terrorism is destroying lives and also destabilizing the whole world. She also hinted and she mentioned explicitly without taking any name of Pakistan, but she mentioned that there are states uh, who are funding terrorists, who are also, you know, perpetrating terrorism in various parts of the world. And she mentioned that uh, those type of uh, elements should be isolated. And you know that uh, really uh, the, the, that country had isolated uh, itself by Pakistan not sending its foreign minister to the OIC meeting. So I think it is a big victory for India that when India stands in OIC, Pakistan keeps itself away. And the whole issue of terrorism, I think that in the coming sessions of OIC, the issue of terrorism is going to be discussed at length. And the, one of the major facts, you know, that um, India is uh, uh, having fantastic relationship with all major, you know, OIC members. She told that one fourth of the United Nations organizations members come from OIC. So it's a big con conglomeration in that way. And you know that uh, she mentioned that uh, OIC should begin uh, to work for humanity and to work against uh, the forces of inhumanity. Yes. So in that way, it is a very big statement standing in UAE that is considered to be one of the major centers of Islamic world. Yes. She told that how Quran tells about humanity, how Quran tells about respecting other religions, but there are forces of extremism, there are forces of hate that are trying to create uh, you know, differences and try to create uh, conflict among the different uh, religious faiths. So I think the first, uh, uh, you know, meeting of India and OIC where Sushma Swaraj, the foreign minister of India, is a guest of honor. She had made the message from India very explicit that how India is working uh, amidst uh, different types of diversity. And she also mentioned that how OIC members also represents the diversity of the world. So in that way, India and OIC are in conjunction and uh, are, are uh, in, at a convergence point that how you can live with diversity yes. and how you can develop among, uh, you know, diversities. Hmm. So I think uh, this is a very big message from India. And that is why I think uh, keeping all these things in mind, uh, the UAE uh, foreign minister, when he invited uh, external affairs minister Sushma Swaraj, is must be keeping in mind that what is the statement going to come from India. Yes. And this uh, statement is coming in the aftermath of Pulwama, yes. you know, terror attack on India. Mm -hmm. so Sushma Swaraj, you know, you know had uh, in a way had taken all the OIC members in confidence. So it is a big thing. It is a big uh, diplomatic uh, victory for India. Yes. And also it is a big diplomatic venture for India to enter into a terrain that has been, uh, you know, forbidden for India till now. Mm -hmm. So now it is a fresh beginning for India diplomatically as well. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Akhilesh, for all those updates there. Of course, as you were mentioning that this is very significant considering the fact that this is coming in the aftermath of the Pulwama terror attack. And after that, the increasing tensions that we saw uh, between India and Pakistan uh, there. Meanwhile, celebrations have begun at the Atari Joint Check Post as scores of people with Indian flags have arrived at at this post to receive Indian Air Force pilot Abhinandan Vardhaman. Now, it is learned that Wing Commander Abhinandan now would be returned to India at the Vaga border. The announcement was made by Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan on Thursday during a joint session of parliament in Islamabad. Imran Khan said that the Indian pilot in Pakistan's custody would be released as a peace gesture. The Indian Air Force said that it is, it is very happy that a captured pilot Wing Commander Abhinandan Vardhaman is returning home but it dismissed Pakistan's statement that it was a goodwill gesture. It said that Pakistan's, uh, uh, the, the pilot's release is rather in line with the Geneva Conventions. And earlier in the day, India had sent a strong message to Pakistan, rejecting the possibility of any deal for securing the release of its pilot and demanding his unconditional and immediate repatriation. Wing Commander Abhinandan, uh, his... Uh, 
MiG-21 was uh, shot and he bailed out uh, after bringing down one Pakistani F-16 fighter during a dogfight to repel a Pakistani attack on Wednesday morning. Since then, he has been in Pakistan's custody. And that's the wrap on this edition of News. Thanks for watching.